In this video, I'm going to show you how I airbrushed this rose using some simple paper templates. It's really easy to do. And be sure to stick around until the end. I'm going to show you how to fix a mistake that happened to me whilst painting this artwork. Let's get into the tutorial right now. So what I've done here is I've printed the rose design that I'm going to do on just a sheet of A4 copy paper and I want to make a basic paper template. So this is going to be designed for beginners. So I'm going to make it nice and simple for you to follow along. If I was going to do a more detailed version of this artwork, then I would make multiple paper templates and get all these petals in nice and accurately. But I'm just going to show you an easy, quick way of doing it, which is still going to give you a great end result. So you don't have to use this particular reference. You can just find any reference by doing a Google search. So you can see I've cut around the outside and what that's giving me is a positive template and a negative template. So for this particular artwork, what I've got here is just a little sheet of synthetic paper. And what I'm gonna do first is using some rice paper tape, I'm going to mask up a border just so we've got a nice frame around the image once it's done. Again, if you don't wanna do this, you don't need to. This is just something that I like to do to keep it looking a bit cleaner. Just folding over the edges and then using some magnets, I'm just gonna secure it to my bench. Obviously, if you don't have a metal bench that you can do this to, then I would tape it down. So just use the air first to get rid of any dust on your surface. And then we're gonna grab our negative template. You can see where it's going to sit. So pretty happy with that. Realign my magnets to hold this into place. You can also use spray adhesive. That works really well. Now what I'm gonna do is just spray the red base color down first. You can see I'm working down onto the paper. That's gonna help to make sure that my edges don't lift up as much. If I do get a bit of overspray, I'm gonna show you how to fix that anyway. So more than likely I am gonna get some overspray. Just a light dusting first. You can see a few marks in the paper. This could just be fingerprints and bits and pieces. I didn't wipe it down before I started. I probably should have, but it's a good thing for you to see. And you'll notice that that's going to disappear as I go ahead and paint the design. So you don't want to saturate the surface, just build it up nice and evenly. The Trident Red's got really great coverage, hence why I'm using that. And it's a nice vibrant color. So just flat tone it. Once you're happy with the uh, flat tone, just give that a little while to dry. Okay, so now that you've let this section, the negative part of the rose dry long enough, it has to be dry. This is the fun part, using some regular copy paper, just tear it in different shapes and make up some paper templates. Now, using those paper templates, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mask off the lightest areas. So for instance, if I want to spray in here, I'm going to use that edge, line it up like so, and spray in there. I'm going to work my way around and also my way out from the center of the rose towards the outside. As you move along, you need to spin your paper mask in order to get all the edges. And you'll notice that with these areas here, once you hit this opening, it's a reverse. So then you would mask again the lightest section and spray the darkest part like so. And then along the top here, keep moving it around. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. It doesn't have to be exact to the reference. So we're just gonna have a bit of fun with it. And the color I'm using for this is Createx Illustration Colors Red Violet. Let's go ahead and establish the centerpiece of the rose. If you struggle doing this completely freehand like this, then you can definitely draw it on, sketch it on first. But again, like I said, this doesn't have to be really accurate. You just wanna get the idea of a rose first. And I wanna keep it nice and simple, seeing as this is a beginner's video. You can see that the more I coat this, the darker it's gonna get. That's the beauty of these illustration colors. They're nice and transparent. So you can pretty much utilize this one tone to get a variety of shading. Just take your time. So you've gone a bit heavier there, which is fine. That's what I wanted. And switch up the paper template. Now we're going to start to work on the slightly outer petals. So these are going to now be masked up the opposite way. You can see I'm turning that paper. Always mask off the lighter section, remember that. If you can remember that, you can't go wrong. 
And for that you just use your reference as the guide. You can see I'm starting to get a bit more of a three-dimensional appearance now. You can see I'm switching between the sheets of paper as well, getting different shapes to give me a different effect for each petal and working my way from the inside out. You'll also notice I'm going pretty light at this stage because I can either come back in freehand and go darker or reline up those shadows. And you don't necessarily need to make a standalone artwork like this. You can obviously incorporate roses into a lot of different things. I actually show my students how to do a basic version of this, which they incorporate into their t-shirt design that has a black and gray skull in it. Remember less is more, keep rotating your paper as well because what you want to be wary of is, so if you use a bit of paper quite a bit and it starts to go like this, that could then get a bit of paint build up on there and stay wet and then damage your artwork. So it's always a good idea to um, keep getting some fresh sheets, tear them up and it'll make the templates vary as well, which is always good. You don't want it too uniformed. Now linking up the outside petals, just going to line it up along there and find a suitable edge. Spray along there. Let the overspray do the work. You can also curl your template. All right. So for instance, if I want to try and stop sort of around here, I would lift my template like so and spray in. And then you can see it's not going to travel as far. And you can see how nicely that red violet blends. You wouldn't want to go and use black, It'd be way too heavy. And if you are enjoying this video and finding it helpful, feel free to share it out. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing, tap on that bell icon, and that's gonna notify you every time I put out new content. A couple of little shades in here coming off the edge of the petal. So I'm really just aiming for the edge of that paper template. I'm gonna curl that up like so, so I can run a bit of a shadow in there. You can see, I've controlled the overspray so it didn't come across here. You can also lift your template up off the surface to get a bit of a blurrier shadow, which is perfect for in there. I'm just picking out a couple of key areas. Do the same here. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in and do a bit of freehanding. Again, if you're not confident with this, then I would recommend you get your templates again. I want to darken off some of these. Just get a general sense of depth. And you'll know from my other videos that I like to mix it up, being freehand with using templates. So for instance, let's say I wanted to sharpen this up. I'll just show you what happens even if it's not the correct edge. Hold it on there, go over it a bit darker, and it's gonna pop it out like so. Same with here, nice and sharp. I want to go a bit darker in this center section. Maybe up nice and close. So almost done with the rows and then we can get onto the background. So 
So you can see I'm running that shadow, but I'm not going right up to the edge, leaving that lighter section there. It's just gonna give it a bit more of a 3D effect and make the edge of the pedal a bit more predominant. Okay, so now let's remove this and tackle the background. Okay, so you can see you've got a bit of overspray around the edge, but that's fine. That's why we kept our positive. And you can, look, you can definitely go back in, go in with a darker tone, maybe add a drop of black to your um, red violet and start to shape this a bit more. But I really wanted to keep this one simple enough for beginners to do, so it's not intended to be a completely accurate representation. And what you want to do now is line up your positive template, the magnets down, and I'm gonna use some white, opaque white. So I'm gonna eliminate a lot of the edge and the overspray by crisping it up. So if you are working on synthetic paper like this, I could go ahead and erase around it, but I understand that a lot of you probably aren't gonna be using synthetic paper, so I'll just show you how to do it using the white paint instead. Again, the key is to make sure that you spray down on the surface. Try not to allow overspray to go underneath. And this time I'm using a Trident white. It's got great coverage. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on the background and I'm using a Moss Green by Createx Illustration Colors. Let's go ahead and spray that in around the rows. You can go heavier in certain areas. Leave some lighter gaps as well if you like. Building up a nice tone. Again, nice and light. Build it slowly, don't saturate it. You can come in and do some freehand as well. Just sh sharpen up some of those shadows. But the key is to have it blurry because then we're gonna have the rose which will be nice and sharp in the foreground. And this will have that nice sense of depth. bit of green at the top as well and again sharper again in certain areas just picking out a couple of those spots that I want to be darker now switching to black this is a transparent black by Trident meaning it's mixed up transparent base and black that in around the edge, blend that into our moss green. Again, all this can be just made up. You don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. I'm virtually making up my own, just kind of following along with the reference as much as possible, just so that if you give it a go, you can um, utilize this video a bit more accurately. But even if you want to follow along for your first attempt and then the next time you give it a go, you can switch it up a little bit. And if you want to really deep dive into your airbrushing tuition, then we also have a online course available, airbrushasylum.thinkific.com. So feel free to check that out. Okay, let's see how we went with the positive mask. Let's hope that there's not that much, let's call it under spray. Carefully lift it up. So you can see, unfortunately, I've got a few touch-ups that I'm gonna to need to do. So totally fine with that. This happens. It's just come from the back of the template. I didn't let it dry long enough, but I'll show you how to go ahead and fix it. So we'll start off with the red again by Trident. And you basically want to work over that section. 
see we're going to have a little spot now the trident red is quite opaque so it makes it nice and easy to fix up these areas and we're going to have to then come back in and re-shadow so if you're using a transparent red then this is going to be more of an issue you would then probably have to utilize a opaque color to work back over the top even something like a white and then basically blend back in but if it's transparent it is going to be harder to fix this up so you can see i've blended that out a lot further than the actual repair so always a good idea to do that okay so now shaving back over it you want to make sure it's fully dry and using the red violet again and the paper templates just pick out those edges that have been affected and then dust back over to blend it in and make it appear as though there's never been an issue So you can see some of the shadows are now going to be a bit darker because I've had to work back over the top of them and blend them out. But essentially this is how, if you do make mistakes, this is how you fix most of your mistakes. You either hide them in highlights if possible or shadows. So even though I would have preferred not having to do this step, I'm kind of happy it happened because it gives me an opportunity to teach you how to fix some mistakes and get it back to this quite easily. So while I'm going ahead and showing you how to fix some of these mistakes, let's go ahead and do this one as well. We'll just clean up uh, the edge. So move it in a little bit and with the black, carefully spray along that edge. See already that's nice and sharp. You don't need much. Again, make sure it's dry before you work on the next part. Okay, for those of you that want to take it that step further, I've just gone ahead and added some black, transparent black into my red violet mix. And I'm just going to freehand some of these sharp, darker areas, mainly in the center section of the rose, just to give it a bit more pop. So you can go along and follow along with this step if you wish. If you're happy with the way it looked previously, then you can stick to the more beginner version. So working nice and close now in order to pull out some of those sharper edges. Again, less is more. Can utilize the paper template again just to pull out a couple of key spots. Okay, it's going to go ahead and call that done. Let's take the masking tape off and have a look. Here is the completed rose artwork. up close to show you a bit more of the detail and I sealed the artwork using a crystal coat matte varnish why not take a look at some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here and until next time go grab your airbrush do some amazing artwork yourself and I'll see you again very very soon in the next video thanks for watching bye for now